Six is Outer Banks, North Carolina, right? You see it? Outer Banks, North Carolina? Yeah. Barter Harvest is made in China. It's false they advertising. Got, I fed enough from China from this year. What's going on guys? This is Mike from Dark Magical Gaming coming at you with episode number one of the Dark Magical Gaming podcast featuring a few friends of mine. We're going to be discussing multiple topics throughout the course of this podcasting series and the topic for discussion today is going to be what we feel the other missing two um, ultimate rares from the next OTS pack are going to be. So without further ado, I'm going to let everyone else introduce themselves. Uh, just say your name and uh, a couple facts about yourselves and whoever would like to start, um, you can go ahead. One eternity later. I mean, my name's Corey. Uh, I, I like to play Yu-Gi-Oh! I think most of us do in this chat, obviously. Most of the time. Uh, I've, been playing, I've been playing since I was like 13. I remember like my first event was at like a Jeffries. And I traded, for some, <laughs> I traded somebody for like a Red Eyes. And I thought I was the coolest shit. And then <laughs> I stopped playing until I was an, an adult after that. Like immediately. <laughs> <laughs> Getting in on a positive uh, note, I like it. Um, there's so many icon. Uh, let's see, I've been playing Yugi. I don't know, it's middle school, so I guess it's almost as um, early 2000s. Um, I played for a while, then around high school when it wasn't cool anymore, I quit playing. Took a break and then started back up. And uh, the end of Necros format. I'm not sure when the format actually was changed. I think it was like, I'm sure it was at one and Cosmos had not come out yet. So between that phase, um, I came back into the game. Um, then I played Cosmos for a while till the story went to one. And then, um, yeah, so far, um, I've traveled a lot for events. I'm so trash and slowly, progressively getting to be less trash. It was kind of good. <laughs> I top locals <laughs> once. <laughs> that kind of counts, like top four locals and an eight man local. You don't have to uh, say it's locals. Just say it was, it was top four. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, aside from that, um, if you guys ever come to Easy Gaming file. in Greensboro, yeah, you guys will see me there. I'm usually there. I, I, I host the remote duels on Thursdays. Um, we do local play on Friday and then uh, Saturday events. I'm always there. Um, that's pretty much it. Currently playing Sword Tool, um, mm. testing Despias and uh, Virtual World still a side piece, and like I um, still mingle around with a few decks on the side, try to help everybody out as much as I can. All right. Yeah. So I'm Kazi. Um. So everybody who's previously spoken or uh, like from the uh, the Greensboro, uh, my friend Ryan, he's also here. We're both from the Raleigh Durham area. Um, so a bit, of, a bit of diversity in terms of geography. Um, so just continuing on with the theme of everyone else, uh, I played when I was a kid. Um, and then once I saw like how cards were super expensive, I just stopped playing. Um, and then like the fiend that we like the fiend that all of us are, as soon as we came into a little bit of money, started buying up all the cards and started dueling once again like a little kid. Um, <laughs> and as, as, as Tony said, go X3 drop. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you only go X3 drop when you have a bounty. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, um, but yeah, the, the, so I started picking, I started playing back um, last year uh, around, so essentially the, so the first deck that I wanted to play coming back was Sky Striker, but that was literally the list when Engage got banned. And I, and I remember it hurting so much because I think I spent like $7 on, per copy for N-Gages. And I was like, oh man, I just spent like $21 on these cards. And now I'm out here just spending ridiculous proportions and exorbitant amount of money up for one single card. It's funny how time changes in, in the term of a year. But yeah, I played a bunch of decks. I, I, I never liked to stick to one deck. I just always thought that I learned as by playing multiple different decks, um, seeing strategies, what I like, what I dislike. Um, where the formats are going and it's always fun to just learn interactions that's for me what that for me is what's super interesting about Yu-Gi-Oh! Uh, yeah, yeah. Any, other, any other card game where there's just so much technical play involved and i think that's always rewarding when 
you look at a board or you try, you try to develop a board, just figuring out different ways to do things. And I always found that really, um, really, really fun about Yu-Gi-Oh, that's for sure. Um, and it's always just a really good feeling when your opponent has a crazy board and you just break it. That That's just like, that's, that's just as yeah, easy. it is. <laughs> like, that, that mental, the, mental, the mental thing is just like, all right, well, like, I have to out, not just like outplay you, but like, I have to outplay you and prevent you from playing at the same time. Yeah, and then I have to make something myself to make sure that you can't do anything on your turn. So that's just always, that's just always fun for me. And I've always found myself um, revolving, or sorry, not revolving, but um, coming towards decks that are able to do that. Last one I played Drytron, this one I'm playing Sword Sword, which to some extent can do something like that, but um, it's just, it, I, I just enjoy the game too much. Um, yeah, that's it for me. Okay, awesome. Hey there, my name is Ryan. I'm uh, the last one here. My, uh, I'm also, yeah, like Kazi said, I'm, I live in the Raleigh-Durham area. Uh, I'm a librarian, so I work at Duke. And uh, I kind of got into Yu-Gi-Oh! Actually, when I was in library school, uh, my wife and I, um, we, we were living, we are doing the long distance thing. And uh, she was still in, we were both in school, and I, I needed something to do. Uh, so I jumped in during Goki format. Uh, I had played when I was younger, but like I was telling Kazi the other day, like when the first ban list ever came out, I was at locals, and like half of my deck they, they told me I couldn't use. So I was like just like devastated. I, I was like, <laughs> What do you mean? They're like, No, you can't use Monster Reborn, you can't use. Harpy's you use Yada. I, I had like Chaos Emperor Dread, like it was just, you know, it was the whole thing. And so like I never played after, I was so defeated after that day, I told my mom, I don't want to play anymore. And I was like going to locals and everything, playing with like some smelly neck beard guys, like I don't even know. <laughs> some things never change. <laughs> I was like, I was like eight years old, met, hanging out with like nineteen year old. My mom would just drop me off, just like whatever. But no, um, so I never played the game until Goki format, and I don't know what got me into it again. I just, I had the cards, and I was like, you know what? I wonder if this is like a good game now. So I jumped into a Link format. I didn't even know what Link Summoning was, and uh, then just started building from there. I started playing. ABCs. Everyone tried to get me to play. They said, "Yeah, man, you should play this deck." The first decks that were recommended to me were Time Lords and Nurse Burn, <laughs> and they're like, "That's like the worst decks imaginable." These people were straight fiends. They did not want me to play. They were like playing Goki format, like you link me, like Nightmare Unicorn was like it was just no, crazy. No Every or, or, or Mermaid, yeah, like my, I, I didn't have a hand. <laughs> um, so like yeah it was so it was so that was my i guess introduction to Yu-Gi-Oh. but uh most people don't know i play like in my in my personal life like most of my family they don't really know too much about it and like my colleagues like they have no idea that i play so they usually keep it on the dl but that's why i like it because it's kind of like my my uh, escape so i've been playing for a while uh decks i like I, I was on Striker for a while, I played Thunder Dragon, Invoked, and then right now I've been on Frankage, just grinding decks like that. So uh, that's kind of it for me. Boy. Um, I guess I guess this is this is your, this is gonna be posted up on your channel. I guess you already have an intro. I guess you're yeah. playing and everything else. Yeah, most people know most of my story as far as how I got into the game, but um, if I had to say something that I feel like is the thing that keeps me into the game the most, it's like the people and the creativity that Yu-Gi-Oh! brings to the table. Um, that you walk into a building full of strangers and you don't know anyone, but you have this, this one thing in common that allows you to be friends with anybody in the entire room, so... I can't think of a lot of things that are really like that, and I think that's really special when it comes to the game. It did. And it's weird that, like, Ryan mentioned that it's like a lot of his colleagues don't know, so he kind of used this as an escape, because at one point it it was like that for me, but then it's just like, I started requesting time off, I was like, hey, I need to take a Saturday, I need to take a Monday off, or I need to come in Monday late, and like, why, because I'm... Going to Ohio, or like I'm going here, I'm going there, and 
it's like, oh, why? It was like, well, I'm playing at this event. I'm doing this and the other. It's just like I have this hobby. Um, at this point in my life, I think it's like mostly everybody that's close to me knows that I play. And um, like they, they're fully aware that it's just like it's a, it's a hobby. But like I told them, I'm like, listen, there's a lot more things that I could be doing in life than uh, going out to a card shop and hanging out with a whole bunch of people. Yeah, I'm like, there's probably and dropping bands on on pieces of cardboard. <laughs> yeah, and I'm just like, I'm like, oh, um, it's like, oh yeah, you're just spending your money on this and the other. And I'm like, listen, if I'm if I spend five hundred dollars on a deck and I, I play this deck for six months and I'm playing this deck thirty hours a week, so that's how time much money you, it's that five hundred dollars? Yep, yeah. that's time and money well spent. Facts. I'm like, and it's gonna be one of those situations. I'm like, it's just, it's just um. Like a good investment, I guess, for to have fun. Um, and like Kasi said, that that aspect of actually being able to, to like, it's like playing chess, I guess, to some extent, because like, there's a whole bunch of different decks that you can play. And there's a lot of different variants, and there's um, a variety of play style changes with a lot of people. Like when Ryan's like, oh, they were trying to play me to like make me to play Nurse Burn. Well, we got uh, the kid that just started coming to the shop. People are like, oh, let's give him 30 trap deck. Like, no, I, I made um, speed boys for him. And I'm like, it's not an easy deck to learn at all because it's got lines of play that are a little bit more complex. But the simplicity of being able to synchro summon over and over and over is there. So like his thought process will evolve completely different than just sitting file back row and passing. <laughs> and... <laughs> yeah, last, like, last thing we need is more is to raise the next generation to just normal something else. Yeah. <laughs> so I guess like going going forward with the game is just like um it's it's very I guess skill based and because you can give the same people in the room like we've we've actually had situations before when we did the structure deck event at Easy so we had the, everybody playing the structure deck a full seal structure deck well. It literally came down to two things. It's just like it was skill set and luck. That was it. It was no other thing in between. It was just that. It was just like, okay, how skilled am I at this game? And how lucky can I get? Like, can I draw better than my opponent? And yeah. um, those those events are so much fun. Like, it puts everybody in the same playing field just to figure out if you actually have more knowledge of the game than somebody else. And um, it's been great. Like, the, the game for... I guess for most of us here, it's been, um, I said a lot of like ripple effects. It's just like, just because of this happened, I met this person and this person does this and this. And the ripple effects that it has a lot, a lot of the times is very, very positive. Yeah, for sure, man. Like, I, I just want to say, yeah, like I got totally enthralled in, in Yu Gi Oh! Like, it, it wasn't going to be, like, remember, I, I just showed up to locals and, uh, got my ass, like, absolutely. I, I, it was like, the locals was like 60 deep and I won one game and it was only because I like drew Regeki and he was playing BA and he was just so pissed. <laughs> I just like booked the game with BLS. Like my first locals, I showed up with a goat deck that wasn't like, I had no extra deck. Like I didn't even know Lynx existed. I didn't even know what exists. Something Like it was just like so, so trash. But yes. I just wanted to play again and then like I, like I got like really competitive into it. But no, man, like, I started from there, and, like, it just kind of morphed into this thing that, like, uh, like that's how I bought my house, is, like, I got really into PSA, and uh, I started sending all those old cards off to PSA, getting them graded, and then was selling, buying and selling, flipping, and then I got, you know, I met some people at events, or, like, just friends, just meeting all these people, and picking up cards and uh you know i got really into go like fruit like legacy format so that like kept me going but then it's just crazy like the kinds of people you meet because you meet all walks of life but like everybody likes one thing and it's the game so i i i think it's i think it's super like you know there's a draw to it and i'm not like ashamed at all that i play uh like like for instance like uh my hometown louisville kentucky they uh <laughs> They, like I was at a regional and I was uh, I was against Dominic Couch at table one and this uh, 
news anchor walks in. <laughs> Hold on one like, second, Ryan. I'm going to reconnect. Like, For some reason, I lost a camera. Okay. Sorry about that. You can continue. Somehow I lost you guys' camera. I don't know how I did that. Oh, okay. So I was at this regional, and, like, the news anchor walks in and, like, starts interviewing Yu-Gi-Oh! players, which is just, like, a bad recipe. <laughs> but, like, she's just, like, going up to people and asking, like, what is Yu-Gi-Oh? What, what are y'all doing out here? And so, like, on the thumbnail of, like, my local is just, like, a picture of me with, like, my map. I'm looking over, and I, I guess they, like, got me, like, looking at the camera or something. And so all my friends, like, were like, bro, is that you? I'm like, yeah, man. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I was away in grad school, like, two hours away, so they all thought, like, what are you, what are you doing? And I'm like, so, but anyways, <laughs> it's just crazy, you know? So um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a wild game, and, like, yeah, like, well, I think all of us are traveling for events now. I'm driving, you know, driving several hours every weekend to do things, and, I don't know, man. It's just fun. It just gets you going. It's a good. It's a good activity. You get to meet new people. Yeah. So something to yeah, uh, get you through the week. Exactly. We're losing Boyd again. Is he, is he just lagging out? Yeah, he's just <laughs> lagging. Probably. I don't know if you can hear us or not. I can hear you guys. Can you hear me? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yep. There's so. a there's a lag on yours. Um. The game has definitely changed changed a lot um, over the years, and like we make the changes some of the times. Um, and even now, it's just like even speaking of traveling to for events and whatever. So we got what Pasadena coming up, um, the new OTS packs coming out. So yeah, it was Pasadena and Vegas. Yeah, and um, we're like even now, so what we're finishing this month, not this month, the next month, I think should be OTS seventeen. Really? It got pushed back. It got pushed back. It's February, uh, February eighteenth now for the new OTS. Yeah, and the OTS on it are gonna be what? The one confirmed so far is uh, the with the Destiny Fusion. Yeah. Yep. Fusion Destiny. They just got banned in OCG. Yeah, just got OCG said no. TCG said you get an ulti. Yeah. <laughs> so like that, that lets you know how far different we are from OCG right now. Yeah. So like just one confirmation, and then you guys want to put it your bed in for um for the next the other two. Yeah, sure. Let's do that. Tony, you go first. Pick two cards you think that you could see being ultimate. I just want one. I just want Ash Blossom. Give me Ash Bolte. That's all I want. It's probably really overdue. And make honestly. it feet Ash. Don't make it regular. <laughs> Bro, no, not the foot I'm Ash. Out, I'm out. I'm out. I'm out. Just trash it. Make it feet Ash. Ash, I'm out. <laughs> no, I just want Ash Blossom Bolte. Um, it's probably like by far one of my favorite artworks on on uh, one of the hand traps. Um, and. Aside from you, that, like... And you want $800 yeah. ulties, cool, I got you. <laughs> yeah, so Konami, can, can if you're listening, um, just, just give me, give me ulti Ash. Um, I want to ask for anything else, except for more <laughs> yeah, OTS packs. I mean, we know the, the typical, like, format of the ulties they pick is, like, one meta, one uh, retro, and, like, one just, like, filler card. Yeah. Uh, like, is it, isn't like, it always an anime card, though? Because this last time it was Utopia, the time before that it was Requiem. And both of those are anime cards. And Arm Dragon level 10 yeah. before that. Yeah, Arm Dragon level 10, yeah. So yeah, it, could, it could be an anime card. So if you're going about it, like, looking at it, that, I, I, don't, I don't keep up with the anime anymore. I stopped yeah. keeping up with it access after... Code. What was it? Um, you said access code? No, that would be crazy. Access code ulti would not mine. be bad. It is an anime <laughs> card. That was mine. <laughs> now i got to think of another one. <laughs> that would be a good one. Access code would be a Dang. good one because you just got the reprint. That's that i got to think. i gotta write, I got to yeah. think of another one now. Which, the quality control on gold rare is not existent. <laughs> I, I wonder if Konami does that on purpose as a, a marketing gimmick. 
Probably is, yeah. Just more height, uh, maximum goal. Think, think about the chest move, though. Like, yeah. uh, it's not a whole bunch of horrible it's not, product. It's, it's, it's not intentional. They they know that this set doesn't appeal to like actual people that play the game. It's mostly just for like budget players. So they they let the they let the quality slide because it it doesn't it's a it's a it's a filler set. And but it's it, literally they just use it to reprint and then like they don't so they don't care. Like it's just to give the budget option because like I I personally granted I'm bougie as hell. I would still <laughs> rather pay the hundred and ten dollars for the for the OG secret than fifty for the for the gold rare, just because the gold is ugly as hell. <laughs> gold. No, but uh, look, if Konami was smart enough to do this kind of marketing, um, to the point where their gold rare actually comes back bad, all of those misprints, and then because you know the Konami, the, the community will like will post it and boast about it. It's like, oh, look at this ugly gold rare that I pulled. I, well, I wonder what I can pull. <laughs> but. Yeah, I think I think Ash Blossom. Personally, like I think it's gonna be. I'm, I'm hoping it's it's an Ash Blossom. Yeah. Um, Let's see. What do I want? So I I was I was thinking. I I know what. I'm stuck between one and two. I would either want um, Lightning Storm or evenly matched as an OT for this OTS. Wait, like Lightning Storm's already got a CR and a Starlight. My, might as well print it to the dirt, bro. <laughs> Just chill, 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 chill. give the man an ultimate rare. <laughs> Bring it to the dirt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. well, you know, what was your second one? What was your second evenly one? Matched. Evenly. Evenly matched? That would be a really good ulti. That would be a good ulti. Considering how much play it's getting right now and like how powerful of a card it is. Because I remember when I first came into the game, Evenly Match was a card that was about like $40, $50, but nobody was really playing it just because it didn't have a, it, the format wasn't good enough. And now for it to come back again, I think like it's a perfect opportunity for Konami to like really cash in on the card. Um, the same way with dimensional barrier. Dim dimensional yeah, barrier was yeah, like yeah. when it came out. It came out at the peak of um, zoo format. It was that yeah, came I, out with the zoo format. When it like, came out, I was I was playing and like I remember it being very relevant because because of Alter guys. Like that was like the one of the only ways like. You, like striker players could beat Alter Geist was just evenly, and when they had to make their board, like set five pass, and it's like cool evenly match. Like that was that was how, that was how you beat Alter Geist. So, yeah. yeah, yeah, but yeah, if I think evenly match would be great, I think it'd be amazing to have that as an ultimate rare, and it would just look so good, a hundred percent. Like I can imagine like the lines like coming out of like the the two people in the middle just like fighting it, fighting, it, fighting. Uh, yeah. it I think it'd be really cool. You guys are actually more high-end collectors than I am. Like, I gave that up, up a while back. Like, especially, like, you three here, and, like, between Cosby and Ryan and Corey. <laughs> the Fiend. It's just like, you guys are the Fiend. Corey, speaking of Corey, Corey's got, what, 16 ulti imprims in his book Dude, right what now? what a savage! <laughs> Bro, I thought it was 11. You have 16? Uh, I, I got 12. I got 12. Oh, okay. <laughs> Only 12. Just, just five off, like... <laughs> but, uh... <laughs> Yeah, I, I honestly, I honestly think like look like judging off like just to like give it some sort of like reference like if if evenly if evenly an ulti would look amazing just because like imperm looks amazing right now and like it doesn't even have it's just like a, it's this what cyber cyber infinity or something like that yeah and, and, and it's like bad like that what with the two six hands from evenly match like it just looks way better. Oh, look um, so dope. It's like even um, what is it? It's not Ghost in Match. It Ghost in Match. It comes out CR. Yeah, that that's yeah, a really good rivalry. CR. That's rivalry. That's rivalry. 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 It looks rivalry. really good. So I can see evenly match coming out. Oh, it'd be so but, nice. It'd be so nice. I don't know. I think my pick. Um, I was also gonna go with Ash, um, but I honestly feel like they're not gonna go Ash. You're just never because... getting Ash. <laughs> never. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that's what the one they would rather do a Starlight for, or like a CR. Yeah. Uh, and then I f my pick, and this is kind of trolly, just because like, I hate the card and I really want to see it banned. Oh, no. I Mine. think I think they would do Mystic Mine and all of them. Oh. <laughs> He's been saying that. He's been saying that for days, bro. He I, has been I, saying that for days. I pray. I pray for the day that it does not get print. Like it's not in there. But well, like, I would just like thinking about the art of the card. I'm like, man, that would be such a clean ulti. <laughs> <But, laughs> 
you would have to like at this point you would have to have it for a cross on target just to have it just yeah. just because somebody's <laughs> gonna play the gold rare and then you would just cross out <laughs> and during my turn i'll wait i'll wait till it's my turn like i can't activate no monster effects cool whatever you think you're gonna win with this mystic mine okay stand by main cross out mystic mine game <laughs> can gold rare mystic mine negate ultimate rare though no, it can't. It's physically impossible. Yeah, it's impossible. It doesn't work. That's kind of like my fun pick. I think if like I'm going off of like a like just like a like a meta call because I honestly kind of think that you could class like Fusion Destiny as like the retro pick. Yeah. Uh, just be just because we're also getting the duelists, the legendary duelists that play the heroes at the same time. Um, and so we're expecting, a, like, I think most people are expecting, like, the Dasher and Celestial reprint, the reprint. in that set. Yeah. Like yeah said, so I think, yeah. I, think, I think that could be, like, the anime or, like, the fillers, the retro filler spot. Uh, and I think, like, the meta, like, a meta card that we could get would be uh, Kit. Oh, no, 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 no. Just, <laughs> just, just, just because it didn't get, it's, it's dodged, the, it dodged the reprints in gold, it dodged the other, the other reprints. Do you want um, Kit Ultimate Rare, Corey? Do I want Kit Ultimate Rare? No. But I just think it could be like the meta card because it has to stop putting that rare. energy it's out there. Sitting at like, it was sitting at like a $12 super. Like, yeah. then I, why not give it a comment treatment in that case? If it needs a reprint. Right, exactly. Make it a comment. Yeah. Make it a comment. Um, I, 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 that's what I'm saying. I think it's just like for a, the meta call. Like I think, yeah. I think, I think going forward for the meta, the meta fill, the meta card that's going to be in there. I think that would be like my call for it. I think it is it unlikely. Absolutely, because it's like too like archetype specific. But I think it could happen. Ryan, what you thinking? So I've got two two picks for so like over the years. They always have a monster. Like there has to be a monster. If they're especially if they're giving us a spell, like it's probably guaranteed. Like the other two will probably be a monster, and one will be a monster from the extra deck. Um, the cards that I would really want, I would want to have two other spells. Not two other spells, but either one of the two, either harpies, like but the 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 TP print because the battle print is just. It, the rare, it's just that even though it's the black rare, it just doesn't look that good. But I think that would look good. They, they they did that with the Cyber Dragon, the alternate art. So yeah, I think like a throwback to that old art, or even the game promo art would be fine. But just like another high end harpies that isn't like twelve hundred dollars for like an LP duster. <laughs> but, yeah, for sure. Uh, but. Uh, and then another one that I could totally see them doing is Dark Ruler no more. Like just, just like oh, because it was a promo, yeah. it was a promo, and then it was a common. And so there's no high end options for Dark Ruler. So I could see them doing that, but again, like I just don't see them doing two spells for some reason. So if they're doing a monster, I've seen it. Like they they did it with. Uh, Thunder Dragon. They did it with uh, Sky Striker too. Like they released a card and then gave it an ulti like just a few months after. So uh, I don't know, guys. I really do think that Sword Soul will probably get. Like I'm thinking, like one of the main deck, like Moe, uh, not Moe, but maybe like. Uh, Long Walker or something like that. Like, 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 super oh, right. Yeah, yeah Tai. Yeah, like, really nice. You know, I can see something amazing. Like or like, or like. I don't know, but maybe something like that. If they wanted to be like real cool, they'd give us like, I don't know, Baron maybe. I, I don't no know. Way, no way, no way, no <laughs> way. Um, <laughs> I don't think if I super, super, super call the blackout wouldn't be bad. Blackout super would be nice. Yeah, it'll probably oh, yeah, just blackout, be super. Cool. Like I'm right. hoping we just get common, common Dasher and Celestial, honestly. Out of the OTS yeah. pack. 100%. Yeah, like just you know, just a reprint for those source of bone. I think I think they'll be. I think they're gonna be in the legendary duelist just because it's. I can't remember the guy's name, but it's the guy that played heroes. So, but Jay uh, didn't play heroes though. No, Yo, give me what's his name. Dark Lord Dark Lord Lord. I think that's a really good call to be honest with you because. The it's got what a common print and it's got the um, prismatic print. Promo. 
Yeah. And that's it. So, like, an ulti print would give every... Because a lot of decks are main deck in Dark Lunar more, or it's in the side. Like, it's because that's where the format currently is, so it wouldn't be a bad meta call to actually... Not even just that, it's just, like, a good call just in general. And you two spells in a body? I could see that happening. Yeah. You know what's super trolly? <laughs> ulti Imperial Order. Oh. <laughs> well, I guess after the YCS. <laughs> honestly, honestly though, that's kind of viable because like it's only gotten the, it's only gotten like commons, rares, and then like the the old the, the PSP secret. secrets. The, yeah. Yeah. It, it messed up with the, they got they got the um, what's it the reverse foil and they got the regular secret. Yeah. So yeah. like, yeah. So yeah, that wouldn't be a bad call either. Yeah. But, but, even I, have, I, bro. <laughs> I would rather them give me ulti Mystic Mind. Yeah, I think I'll take the Mystic Mind. <laughs> Dude, actually, I'm playing this combo. Oh my god. That's the next make, sure you, make sure I have a monster in the field when you play it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, I have two that no one named, so... Um, well, the first one I had was Access Code Talker, but Kazi stole that one from me, so I came up with another one. <laughs> uh, my second one was Artifact Lancia. Oh, I think I could. Oh, it would be God. pretty sick looking as an ultimate, I think. It's the secret. The secret words are beautiful. Yeah, but the ulti yeah. would be insane. Yeah, are you gonna skip man? Yeah, and then my second one was uh, Rusty Bardage. No! <laughs> I think that would look really yeah. good as an ultimate rare. I mean, to, to be fair, to be fair, Bardish only has, like, what, a it, common and then, like, the gold rare or something like that? Yeah, oh, it has, ultra, like, yeah. yeah, the ultra it's and the like gold. Ultra, ultra and gold. Yeah. Yeah, so one medium <laughs> rare print and then and then a trash ugly print. Yeah. But so. the PK's kind of like the budget meta deck, ain't it, at this point? Yeah. Yeah. Well, not, yeah. well, is it really? Because scales got reprinted, boots and gloves got reprinted. Yeah. The, the, the what? Uh, the gets, I mean, I just picked up the core for like almost max rarity minus like minus like the starlight torn scales, and it's, it was like like a couple hundred dollars. Like. Yeah. I wouldn't say. It, yeah, I mean, and that's like. I rarity version of yeah. it. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. yeah. I remember, because when I had first got in the core, I had Ryan buy it for me. He only got it for like eighty bucks. Yeah. Super cheap. Yeah. Super cheap. Now it's now so, the hype is crazy expensive. Yeah, the most expensive. The most It'll expensive. Just keep going uh, up too. Secret, Secret Frog Blades are sitting at what market price sixteen dollars. Yeah. Uh, piece about fifteen. So you're looking at what twenty, thirty, forty. You're only really yeah. playing two, right? But you're only really playing two. Yeah, and then everything else is like you got Maximum Rare yeah. Dorado, uh, Cloak got to reprint, mm -hmm. uh, Boots got to reprint, and then Gloves got to reprint in Brothers. So you're looking at, I don't know, maybe. I mean, the, the only other thing that's like a higher rarity that is is the Torn Scales. It's like 45. The, the secrets are like, what, 15s? Yeah, forty five for, for the fog. Yeah, it's the budget. It's the budget deck in the meta right now. Yeah, I mean, but I feel like in order for the deck to be viable, you have to play um, DPE. And yeah. Appaloosa, Appaloosa is pretty expensive as well, even for the even, even the gold rare is like thirty bucks. Yeah, fifteen, sixteen. Yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah, and then and then you also and then I think some builds play the future Draco, and then well, Zeus is also cheap as well. So I think it's just the DP that might be a little bit expensive right now for the deck. Yeah, and maybe maybe Dagda is Dagda expensive. Is high. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, it's it's crazy. Like you look at deck cores, the deck cores themselves aren't crazy expensive. All of the other it's shit, the, is it's, it's the power cards that are yeah. 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 Let's see, uh, Gorber Access Code Talker is sitting at fifty five right now. Fifty five. Yeah, for the gold rare. Yes. Wow. It's tragic. People are spending that much money on that card. <laughs> <laughs> on a gold rare. Oh my god. The, looking at it from high to low. Yeah. High to low on that Eldorado said it's access code talker at fifty five and then literally it, it tanks down to like uh part of the strap against the fifteen. And then Vertex at tw Vertex at twelve dollars right now. Wow, that's wild. Yeah, but Dragoon's still at 90. 
Yeah. 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 The nice thing with PK though is like, it's it's like that's a good investment because like right now it's like budget meta quote unquote, but like right after Pasadena when Grand Creators comes out, thank God it got delayed a little bit because I didn't want to deal with that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, when we get the Rave Engine, like that's immediately like, like tier one, like immediate tier one. I yeah. do have to give a quick shout out to it's Corey just, everything's for just gonna uh, pop hooking up. me up with this. Oh, that's hot. Pretty sick, right? That's hot. I need a second one, though, unfortunately. <laughs> well, we, know, we know someone. I, I know someone with one. Do you? Wait till after the ban list. Or at least wait till oh, after yeah. Pasadena, because Pasadena's coming up next. Yeah. And, like, that being yeah. said, it's just like, the medical for Pasadena is going to be crazy, because you're going to start looking at consistency. Here we go. And siding. <laughs> like, the Sonic is going to be. Business. Okay, so here's where I'm at with it. Everybody's freaking out about PK right now because they, they said, where's PK in these top cut lists? And I think going into this past weekend's events, like, everyone's like, where's PK? But, like, you know, everybody for that event was siding heavy for that deck. Like, siding in Lancia's, like, just triple Lancia standard, like, I just, I just feel like everyone was prepared for the matchup, but I don't think everyone's prepared for like brave PK when it comes out. Like, I, I, cause it, it just creates like a different dynamic. Um, the deck just is like, has like, we don't even have max C and, uh, the deck is just fully unlocked it, in that format. And like, I, I was really hoping Pasadena would have it because I was hoping like Crosso would get, would get bought out because you know like it was going to be such a clutch card for that event. Now it's like, do I even play it for that event? And uh, the, because it, it's it's still kind of just like an unknown format. But I do think that because of the results of this, because of, like think about it, we're like a month out and everyone's got the holidays, so like. I don't think there's going to be a whole lot changing in the meta between now and Pasadena. Uh, so, like, I, I think it's going to be a Sword Soul meta. Like, I really do think so many people will be playing Sword Soul. There'll be some PK. There'll be some, uh, you know, DP Invoke and Sky Striker. Like, like we've been seeing in, like, all the... Yeah, Burda. Yeah, all the of course, yeah. But, but, I mean, those... I mean, we know how to counter some of these decks, but then, like... I don't know. It just it just comes down to um, being prepared for those matchups, which I don't. I feel like the only new deck in the room is really uh, Berta in that in that and, and Sword Soul. But like, yeah. but like Sword Soul, so many. It's so hype right now. Like, I just think that is going to be the dominant deck in the room that day. So yeah. more people. You think more people are going to be um, prepared to side for it, or you think more people will be main decking for it? I think he will be prepared for it, but I do think PK will probably perform a little bit better just because, because like the cards that counter Sword Soul don't counter PK. So like Sword Soul cards, like like Sword Soul could care less about Lancia. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so, yeah, no, no, not that. That's kind of incorrect. <laughs> it, it depends. If you're playing the Tenny build, the Tenny build Lancia hurts a lot. Yep. And I, I will say the, the 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 primary reason why PK in this format isn't doing as well as people thought it was is because of where is he? Where is he? Since Sword Soul is so, it's so predominant, this card. <laughs> it is this card. Oh, Protoss. Proto yeah. single handedly destroys Phantom Knights, and you have access to this card every game. So if you're playing against Phantom Knights and you just drop a Protoss. <laughs> I'm in danger. It's basically over. Like they, there's no coming back from that card. Like literally, the amount of times all you have to do for a PK board is break through it, slap Protoss, and then you just win the game. Um, so, okay. so like, yeah, and like what? I, but what I mean by that is like everybody knows the PK matchup. Everybody knows the striker matchup. Everybody knows the invoke matchup. They just don't know the sword soul matchup as much. And so, like, I think. Going into that event, everyone's gonna be like freaking out how to how to play against that deck. But don't you think so that's, that's what you mean. 
don't you think by, by then people will be um, like brushing up on it? Because that's a month away. Oh, yeah. I, yeah, I, I think it's just IRL, like, all those people will know. But there's still going to be people in the room that are just there for the thrill of the day. And, like, yeah. Yeah, I've been at a lot of YCS where, like, I'm like, bro, you came here to do this today? Like, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, I, 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 went to, uh, I went to, I went to, I went to, me. I went to like, a 600, I went to, like, a six, 700 person, like, like, regional in Charlotte one year. And my first matchup was, like, was like no, like still like Dino Rabbit, and I was like, I was like, why are you playing Dino Rabbit right now? <laughs> like, <laughs> this deck doesn't do anything in the meta, but it's like <laughs> some people just like. I, I don't even know if it's like a meme or if it's just like they're they're just like that loyal to like the deck that they're like, I oh, I'm just gonna play this in every format. Their friends but, dragged them out because they had nothing else to do that day. Yeah, 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 yeah. Their friends like, yo, let's go, man. And I was like, all right, I guess I'll just bring a deck along and just play. I think, yeah. I think one of the biggest things going into like going into the Pasadena is like we know now uh, <laughs> from from the remote YCS like like Sorcels Sorcels for real and like Burduck I think Burduck is for real but the difference is Burduck you it it's got a really narrow ceiling it's not even like a high ceiling it's really narrow like you have to open or like like know the deck super well in order to like get to the point where you're just in your it's the matchups are all really good so what, and, like, you gotta get to the point where nib getting nib doesn't matter yeah getting nib never and really matters because i don't know i feel like nib only stops future draker from coming up on the board and then you just normal summon a tribe or getting you just still get wrecked <laughs> yeah yeah but uh i think also also think a lot of like the list for trilateralist uh they aren't playing the barrier statue, and I think a lot of them will go back to barrier statue, just oh, because, just yeah. because it's so favorable against most decks. Like true, almost every deck can just like normal summon out it, but like you gotta think like if you if you just force them to normal summon to out your barrier statue, right, like, that's that's a lot what, of play. Else, they, yeah. they can't do they can't do much else to your board. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I think I think that'll be a big thing. I think a lot of people will be picking up their copies of Dimensional Barrier if they haven't already. And then I think a lot of the Sword Soul players will go back to that, like, going second build because they don't want to lose to, like, Dimensional Barrier. So, um, and I think a lot of people will be more, I think a lot more people will be on the Scythe combo. Uh, and, like, because, like, I, I did play in the remote to YCS. I played one PK player, and I don't know why, but he... Set up the scythe play, let me resolve my pot of prosperity. I drew into a, a droplet and no! <laughs> I'm in danger. And then, and then, and then he and, and then he did it. He still at that point still didn't even try to DPE to pop the scythe. And I was like, okay. So then I just went to battle evenly, evenly. Oh. Uh, uh, chain droplet, send the evenly. <laughs> so he can't couldn't do anything to stop it. And it, it's just like that. Honestly, just like made the match kind of free and then uh but like if he would have if i i didn't have anything to stop it if he didn't let me resolve that prosperity and then that's just a game two to you and i'll pass <laughs> we'll go to game three so i think a lot more a lot more people will be on that package just because like that's one way to stop one way to stop sword soul along with like the barrier yeah this is, to me personally this is the first ycs that um I genuinely, uh, I'm overwhelmed with excitement to go to because I can't remember the last event that I went to. I think it might have been Texas. I don't know if I went to another event after, which was uh, Nats in Texas. But I, with like when I go to Nats, I always think the skill level is going to be a lot higher. And that's what I feel like going into this YCS, that this, the player skill base is going to be that much higher because we're feening that much for an event. Yeah. But I also think about California regionals are always massive. Like, California regionals are just probably the most insane area because they they got such a dense population in such a big area. But the regionals I mean, are, what, over a 1,000? I mean, we know it's capped. It capped out, and they have what, two ballrooms with a, with a capacity of 1,000 people. So it should be it should be 2,000 people oh. at that event. Oh, Lee. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we're gonna be playing. Uh, we're gonna be playing at least ten rounds. So. <laughs> so 
at that point, I got to sleep. I do think if, um, like, I'm, I'm going to be taking sword toll and I'm going to be testing a teeny build. Um, but I also think, like, skill cap with a lot of decks, like, like especially like BAPK, the amount of seat time each person has with it will actually determine how the matchup goes. Because knowing certain interrupt- interruptions in Bird or knowing certain interruptions in, um, in Sword Soul can pretty much make or break any board. And like always capitalizing on your opponent's misplaces, I feel like it's major key in Yugi. And that's something that like I, I was uh, testing with Kevin yesterday. And that was something that I kept telling him about. It's just like, it's not that I'm a better player than you. It's just like I can capitalize off of misplays a lot faster than you can. Yeah. And, um, and it's just like that's pretty much what I, what I consider just a, a good meta call over there and, and for Pasadena. Um, I don't see, like, I think, I think for sure it'll be um, a good variety of decks, especially considering how many players are going to be in attendance. But I don't expect us to start playing real Yugi till like after round four. That's when you, your mindset's got to start clearing. Um, I think everybody here will be at an advantage uh, in comparison to the local players because the way our bodies are already set up, like think about it, the tournament may start at 10 in the morning there. Well, it'll be what, two o'clock here, one o'clock here? One. By then your, your mind's already adapted to the day. Like your mind's fully active, fully awake. You're not dozed off. Um, you're not sit there sleep deprived at this point because your body feels like, hey, look, I had a full day of rest already. Like it's two o'clock in your mind, so you're like your, your brain's still more active. But then at that also now on the other hand, it's just like what's gonna do to the to the late rounds? So we're like, oh, we're round nine, round ten. <laughs> like I am completely deprived. Haven't had food all day. Been drinking water. <laughs> like if you can get Uber Eats to deliver us something just to snack on between breaks, I think that's that's another aspect of the game that. It's um doesn't really get taken into account a lot. Even just it's like just at like, locals, like I just have I, like I can eat a big meal before locals, and it'll be like two hours, and I'm already starving. Yeah, it's just like that. That mental, the mental fuel is always going to be kind of necessary. Yeah. Um, I think for sure top four decks. I I kind of expect Drytron to make a comeback. To be honest with you. Mm. <sighs> like, I don't just. It, that's just another deck, like in my opinion, that just like loses to Protos. <laughs> like, uh, it's it's like, so, so the Drytron matchup is if you're playing Tenny Sword Soul, you literally make sh- uh, Alfang, Alfang, and Protos and Drytron can't play at all because yeah. you lock them out of lights and you lock them out of darks, and at that point they literally can't do anything. So I think so, that's the reason why Drytron is like so falling out of favor. It's because if they lose dice roll, because they're not they're not really playing hand traps. They're, I think they're playing droplets in the main, um, and that doesn't really do much to prevent a board. And once you get to the state of Protos calling a dark, um, it's kind of brutal. Because you sure you can drop with the Chowfang, but if you get rid of the Chowfang, you're searching an Ash against Drytron. If you hit it at the right place, it's crippling. So I think that's like one of the reasons why. And also, I think a lot of the Drytron players have moved on to Sword Soul. I know Corey and I were we were one of the culprits. Yeah. <laughs> we, <laughs> we went from that deck to this deck, so I think it's it's that switch right now. Um, the power cap switch. Yeah. I, mean, yeah, I, was, I, mean, I was about I mean, to say that. Yeah. yeah, it's the player base for sure. Like you also have to think about like what else has changed. Like the other variables in the in the one that's like glaring is just the introduction of DPE into the format, and it 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 does. It, it does make it difficult, just like one random pop can, um, it can, you know, it can snowball, especially in that matchup, like a skilled player that knows how to interact with Drytron. You know, you also have to remember that Drytron was in the format for a long time, so a lot of people know how to counter it. And so that's what I meant earlier about PK. It's just like, you know, when, when you see a certain card, you know, this is the card I need to interact with in order to get an advantage in this game. And so, and like, even like, you know, any deck that people are familiar with, but like, I just feel like for some reason, Sword Soul still feels untapped. Like when we were at a locals this past Sunday in Raleigh and uh, like 
Yeah, like a lot of people were on Sword Soul, but just like when I was watching people interact with the deck, they just didn't know how to play against it. Um, and even people that were like playing the mirror, like they just didn't know how to play against. I, the builds were just so different. But. You have to make Giga Brain plays in the mirror. It was wild. Like I so in the final round, in that tournament Ryan got second and I got third. So I was playing the mirror against one of against one of our friends. Um, so I just I just read his body language. I knew he had sack. And so in my head, it was like there's Evil Lee in his hand, there's Dark Ruler in his hand, there's Droplets in his hand. So what I had, what I had made my board was Dragite, Chishao, Baron, and Protos. I looked at my Dragite. I took him to the corner. I was like, Hey, buddy, listen here, man. You're the only water, okay? <laughs> Protos, Protos is gonna sack you. I promise you, it's gonna be worth it. So I called water, sack my Dragite. Little did I, and I knew, and I, I knew exactly what he had. So on his turn, he dark ruled my board and then dark hold everything. But at that point, I was still safe because I had called, I had called water off the dragite, and he was just like, "Damn, bro, I literally can't play after this." And his whole hand was combo afterwards. But just like making those plays that people aren't aware about, because it's like, how counterintuitive is that? Like, why would you sack your own dragite? You know what I mean? Like, why would you ever do that? But it comes that happened, up. That happened to me in the remote to YCS too. I was playing the mirror. And the guy made Chang Ying and then summoned Protoss and called Water. Ah! And then banished banish my cards off the Chang Ying protecting itself. <laughs> <laughs> and then I couldn't summon any tokens. And I was like, well, we're going to K3, but let's go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like the, the mirror is really, it's really interesting because you do a lot of funky stuff to make sure that stick, things stick the way that you need it to. Because I knew, I was like, this board is going to get cracked. Just the way he's acting, I can just feel it. Like, it, it, there's no yeah, way. He's too confident. He's too confident yeah, in his hand right now. Exactly. Like, there's no way any of these cards on my board are going to stick the next turn. It's like, you know what? I'll do you the favor. I'll get rid of some of the cards for you. But, but this Protoss is going to put in this work. <laughs> I think another thing with the format is just, like, how de how resilient is your deck on the follow-up? And, like, like, people like to joke about decks, like, invoked, but... That deck has so much follow up. Like it doesn't, you know, it's always gonna have the Alistair in hand. The good player is gonna keep it in hand. They're gonna, you know, they're gonna weigh out the pros and cons on what how they're gonna interact with their opponent. And the, it's just like a resource game. Same thing with Striker. Like you never want to play against Striker if the player is better than you because they will know how to interact with your deck. And I feel like a lot of people are playing these like big board breaker cards right now, just like big white, like big white, big negate. You know, but they're not. Think it's not as much as a resource game. So I think if you can, if your deck can outpace or like, you know, if you can play a long game, it's good. And that's what I like about DPE because it's like the best long game card ever. It literally just, it just yeah, and, and it, yeah, it's just one pop, but it's every freaking turn. And you, you and you know, if you get that celestial effect, or, or even like the dasher effect's pretty whack too. Like yeah, especially you know, like, when you draw nib. Those are so the mirror I just drew. Yeah. Exactly. Guess I'll die. I just drew. <laughs> but I th still I, salty I, I about agree. that. I think, uh, and like that's another big reason why I think the meta still isn't solved is like the amount of Shadol and folks you see is, and I've seen I, somebody said it in a video, and I was like, that makes a lot of sense, and they're like. Uh, the reason why there's so much Shadal invoked representation is because the meta isn't solved. It's the deck that everybody plays because like it's consistently good uh, until the meta is solved, and then once the meta is solved, a lot of people switch off of it. Yeah. So, like I think going into into Pasadena, we're gonna see a, a like a, a recess of of Shadal invoked, and I think it's just gonna be a lot of Sword Soul, a lot of Phantom Knight, a lot of Burda. So I think by by Pasadena, a lot of people will have solved how to play bird up properly yep. i think yeah. a lot i think a lot of people are on the deck and they don't set up the board in the way that they can benefit the most a lot I of people just get choked up on make draco future make some more summon chicken and pat summon <laughs> chicken. <laughs> <laughs> i think so uh, this might be a hot take but like going off of what Corey said, i honestly think i think blur the strawberry will win the ycs just because by then that time people have figured the deck out and it's relatively cheap Considering all the other decks, because like I think the most expensive card in the deck is what Bird Call, and it's only like a fifteen, sixteen dollar card. Um, I'm not sure if like a lot of people have like droplets in it. 
Sorry? Oh, uh, yeah, but it's like, you know, like the power cards are always the power cards. All the decks. Yeah. Like, I'm the, just the core. Like, it's so, that initial, the initial core. Yeah. Yeah, it, it's, pretty, yeah. It's, pretty, it's pretty cheap. Um, and I just feel like that deck, and because a lot of people don't know how to interact with that. Even I don't know stuff. I don't, I don't know, like, the most ideal choke points for that deck. And I think that going into the event, people are going to make mistakes of, like, trying to imperm the XCs when it has one that can't be targeted. Um, and like the amount of times that's or like trying to pop a future Draco when people are like oh I didn't know that you can't destroy future Draco. There's gonna be a lot of those interactions that are win games for that deck, and I, I it just it pushes that deck pushes through so much, so much. I mean sometimes as simple as ashing the bird call and they pass turn, but it's like you have to have it. You know? you, you you have to have it, and then sometimes yeah. it just does nothing. And it what what really sucks is when they no when this has happened to me before where it's like. I let the future Drago go. They normal summon a Cry Brigade. You, I impermit, and then they go Keras, pitch from hand, and they summon the Keras, and they keep going. That that that's just that's just very mean. Where it's just like I just lost my only interaction. <laughs> you know what I mean? I lost, can... I lost my only interaction, and you still end on Dragon Lords, Little Bird to pop seven times, um, some more with the Avion, and then the future. Like that that really sucks. Just just having to fist sit. At the face of that board, it, it's brutal. It's brutal. Yeah. After play to remember. That's why I think. That's why I think going into Pasadena, like, uh, like I think that most of the Sword Soul players will be on a more of a going second build, because uh, like we saw it initially, like doing really good as a going second build, and then like now it's like fifty fifty, but like ten E Sword Soul is more, more prevalent than pure Sword Soul. Uh, and I think going into into Pasadena, I think that ten, that's going second version will just be more dominant because if you're playing into like a deck like Bird Up, where they're making they have a, a monster in a gate and take, they have like three untargetables, one that's a constant like a five mat special summon bounce. Like I think you have you honestly are going to have to play the blowout cards to get there, and then. Like I was, uh, I was talking to somebody, and I was like, I was playing against. Uh, I was testing my, I was testing my tenny build, and I made, I made the, uh, I used the tenny cards first, so I got locked into worms. Or no, I was playing against it, so I made, I made the uh, ruddy rose to like banish both graveyards, and then did the tenny combo line to make the Cheng Ying. And like the changing was just massive, so like, it's, like you just you, it's yeah. like it's like a fifty six hundred attack changing, and it's like okay, just run over anything I dropleted it, and then just attack with the changing and it's game. So it's like it it's just crazy. It's got crazy potential. I think the other thing is with this event, and uh, I know this is what we're all talking about the whole time, but with this like or just like the next format. Is like, I just think Rogue's going to perform really well because there's just so many blowout cards right now that, like, any deck that plays, like, a good game or sees, like, what they need to see uh, can really pop off. Like, I, I don't know, man. Like, I, I've just seen a bunch of random decks just really perform well at locals. And I don't know if it's always just, like, the scene or whatever, but, like, there's, yeah, I don't know. There's just a lot of good decks in there. We've, like, mentioned a handful of decks right now, but we haven't even brought up, like, how like how prevalent Virtual World is, how consistent that deck is, and, like, you know, it, it constantly is performing well. There, there, there's a lot, of, like, there's a lot, of, like, Lich is still viable. There's a lot of viable decks. So I think, I think for the event, what it's going to come down to is how good are you in lots of different types of matchups and how well do you know how to play against these matchups. I do think that there are going to be, at a certain point, just like any event, like at a certain point in the day, you're going to be playing a lot of similar stuff, but I don't know. It just comes down to how resilient you are. And I think like what Tony was talking about earlier, just like, it, you can't get in your head, like, and you gotta, you gotta be in a good mental state and you have to be healthy. Like, I've, there have been times where like, I just want to be like full tilt about a, a game but knowing that in the next match it doesn't matter and if i don't win then i i'm just out so like i just think like not losing to the tilt is so important because it can just totally mess up your your day and like the rest of the event for you and so 
I don't know, even like locals, like just trying not to get tilted locals, which is hard. Like, you know, you don't want to lose at locals because it's like, you know, it's people you're you know. A good player, you should be, you should be like, you like, should know the matchups or whatever. But I mean, it happens. Like, you just get sacked sometimes, and you yeah. just need to like know how to like play out of that and just like have a good time. I get tilted at locals. What do you think yeah. about rank? Is this a medical for for Pasadena? You think it's just like have, have you have you tinker with the build? I know you did really well with the small world build at that case tournament, and then I saw that same build actually do really well at that, um, remote regionals. Um, yeah, it talked to the EU too. Yeah. Oh, so were they playing? Were they playing small world? Yeah. I'm, I think the EU the EU build was playing small world. I'm looking at it. I'm looking it up right now. I know that I saw a list that was playing small world for sure, and I, I wasn't aware that Steve was actually playing small world the other day at the case event in uh, virtual world. Yeah, yeah, he played Small World. Like I saw, I saw that he posted up that that, that um, his um, virtual sword, which is I, I don't know, it's uh, the virtual world uh, sword soul, and he was playing Small World in it. But yeah. so, like, so like the reason with so like the thing about Brink Kids is the reason why I think I was able to overperform at the the case tournament the boat case tournament is strictly down to dp like not being there like i mean some people were kind of you know like they you know but some people were prepared with it but a lot of people weren't playing dp and the kids you know that's just one other interaction that you know like people just whatever you summon they're gonna dp it and that is like a good thing and a bad thing i did see the list that topped um, I did see a list that, re- that I think it was like an info video or someone, but like the dude was running like triple droplets. He, he wasn't playing DP at all. He was just playing like triple droplets. Uh, like, I guess for like DP and just like, board, you know, big boards and just, he's playing like all gas. He was playing like triple desires. And, um, so he's playing like a desires build with like three of's of everything. But the deck, like... I don't know, like, because I've been tinkering with, like, playing DP, and I was playing Small World, and now I'm just playing Floods, because I'm just trying to see, like, how viable the deck still is in this format, and I don't know, man, like, it's just, you really gotta, you really gotta play perfect or you just get punished, so. Yeah, so yesterday your loss was to what? Like, the Invoke Dogmatic Eldritch, right? Uh, Which is crazy, because, like, I just, I lost the Brick, which is wild, but, like, the... Um, like the whole day I was playing. It does happen. In Frankens, it does Soul, happen. Sword Soul, PK. I was playing against like a bunch of, you know, all, all meta. And then I just start playing against like a 60 card Invoke Dogmatica Lich deck. And I'm like, fuck. <laughs> like, I, I just could I just couldn't have grind. But he, you know, he went first. But, but yeah, like it, it comes, it comes down to a little bit of luck. But I also think just, you know, DPE is just so strong, man. And if like if one if one third of the player base is playing it, it's like it's not good. <laughs> yeah. With um with decks like Virtual World and and even um Eldridge, my main worry is like how many floodgates they can actually main deck. And it doesn't matter to them. Like I saw the build that was playing um three trap trick. Um, and they were siding into dimensional barrier, and I'm like, "Yo, that's kind of insane." It gives you six six copies of dimensional barrier, because oh, like you see one or the other, not just that. It's like the ice dragon prison that was really annoying. Yeah, um, I've been playing against uh, I guess Trinity that's been playing um, tri brigade floodgate or I guess trap tri brigade. I'm tri brigade, um, yeah. which is his main deck in three ice dragon prison, three imperms, three trap trick. And he sided into the dimensional barriers, and he saw a trap trick for the dimensional barrier. And I'm like, I think he ah, plays judgment too and, and strike. And you, you just win. <laughs> yeah, like, and Kevin meta, was doing the same thing. yeah, like locals meta is just nuts because you know, like people will just play off the wall stuff. Like you cannot anticipate it, and like, and and, and in Trin- Trinity's like defense, like that dude, I had no idea that he was playing trap trick. I didn't know he was playing the sauce. I thought he was just playing boneless tri brigade. And then he just starts popping off with all these crazy cards. And I'm like, bro, there's no way going first I'm going to win against, you know, this trap. You know what I mean? 
<laughs> yeah, man. He hit me, hit me with yeah, uh, Imperm, Judgment, Ice Dragon Prison, and then Revolt. I'm like, oh my I'm, God, looking so last, good. I'm looking at the last card in my hand, and I'm like, pass. I'm like, in I danger. didn't do anything else. It's like, <laughs> it's like, all right, Kobe, you got another move for me. I, I didn't know I had that. Like, I'm just gonna look at you and pass her. And like, I'm like, yeah, you go, go ahead. And then, like, in my in my head, I'm like, oh well, I'll make him go first. This is game two. Dude. And I look at my hand, and I brick, and I'm like, well, this isn't right. I'm like, I really, I'll, lightning storm better hit me with it with the gold. I draw for turn, and I'm like, well, I'm losing. Like, <laughs> so, this, <laughs> but, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. so this is going back to what Corey said about um, Sword Soul try, starting to play going second, because. I've had this issue where just against back row deck, it's very difficult to play. But after I started main decking lightning storms, losing dice roll to back row decks is it's 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 just so free because you draw it and then you clear the whole board. So and what I've also realized with especially with sword soul, you have to you have to grind with those matchups. You're not going to be able to OTK them because they're going to have torrential tribute strikes, judgments, and all that. So what I've what I've the, so the mindset that I've started adapting now is that I'm going to end on one body. You're not going to kill me next turn, right? So even if you out it, I've still got plenty of gas for the next turn just so I can keep grinding and grinding and grinding where I can get to a point where I have my opportunity to capitalize. Because what I've realized is that your, your, your moment for, cap, for capitalizing is never on the first turn. There's going to be a moment in which those trap decks, especially Outlook, for example, they're going to have like a, a turn or two in which their Sanguines or their, or their Golden Lands are active in the grave and that's when you have to take advantage and kill them and if you start burning through all your resources early on that's when that deck really takes advantage of your board because it's going to break the board and then you have nothing and that's the worst effect that's the worst feeling and i've also started doing that with striker as well because striker they're going to break your board the, the, we will we, we'll end on she shall baron and maybe a blackout maybe an imperm and against striker that doesn't really do much so what i just told myself i switched the mentality i'll just grind with them they're not going to be able to kill me. I'm not going to be able to kill them. But it's just a matter of who gets the upper hand. And the card that really helps with those matchups is, is just Dragite. Like, if you go Moye and then you just link and you synchro into Dragite and you just sit on that, Moye will get you a draw. And then at that point, you have a constant resource battle at that point. And you just sort of essentially just wait to see, like, okay, here is my opportunity to not capitalize. And that's when you have to strike. Because otherwise, like, if you just play into the back row, you're like, if you just... Five head stubborn. I'm gonna break through this. I'm gonna blow through this. That's not gonna happen. It's not gonna work because it's gonna happen like what Tony, what you just said. You're like ah, last card, nothing, pass, and then you just lose. You know what I mean? Um, so I think like that. That's the mentality I started adapting, and I just and that's what I find like pretty beautiful. Is that it gives you that opportunity to fight with those decks if you play it properly because you have to because it's like you're always. Because I, I haven't been playing too long, my mentality has always been just shit the board out. You know, get it out there. If they break it, they break it, and then that's it. Move on. But like, I'm starting to change the thought process. Like, depending on the matchup, I have to uh, think differently. And I think that's yes, even helping. tempo. Yeah, exactly. You got like you have to rein your own horses back at sometimes. And if and it, like I said, it may feel counterintuitive, but sometimes it does get the job done, right? Like literally setting up a drag eye and then negating a sanguine every turn, like that is crippling for Eldritch. Or it's like going against Striker. Negating the end gauge every turn can be crippling. Um, so it's just like knowing, like, it's, and it's one of those knowing those matchups. But like, because like back row is really a problem. Because like the times that I did beat Trinity was because I either it was either really blind the game state, and he just kept trying to see who out resource, or I just or joined the uh, the blowouts with the lightning storm to it. But it really depends. Um, and then it, it, going back to Corey's point, it's like having the like the world breaking really set points. Like they do come up quite a bit. Yeah, I guess it's like uh, being able to know game tempo against certain matchups is always um, one of those good, good I guess, like um, scenarios to build. Um, I, for me, it's just like Virtual World created the tempo for me. Because um, like before, I was, uh, I've always been that really aggro player. And I've gotten punished for being too aggro sometimes. Yeah. And it's just like, all right, well, I'm playing it straight into this nib. Like, okay, if you got it, you're smart. Better strong. have and it. Like, nib, and I'm like, I knew it. I lose. They're like, dang, instead they had of, it. Yeah, instead of like, okay, well, I, I'm, I'm, I got, I got my setup. 
uh, with the Chi Chow and the Trapping Grave and a Trap Set. So, like, I got a Monster Negation and a Two Pop for free because I'll banish a trap, get my token, and then I'll, use, I'll pop my token for my two, and then next turn I can continue to play. Exactly. I uh, know. Tony says no. Tony's going to try to. No, no, no. Yeah, we're going to go we're long. Yeah, I'm alone. I'm going to lose my board and I'm just going to Long look at Daddy. It like, all right, cool. Um, long this long situation. Long Daddy. <laughs> yeah, it's just like Long Daddy. But, yeah, <laughs> but I mean, at least the game now, I, we were talking earlier, it's just like at least the game's a little bit more affordable than it's ever been. Like, I feel like right now it's been more, more affordable than it's ever been. And really? that's something that, like, um, it's it's weird to, to actually even say that because people now will come to the shop and me working behind the counter, like I see like the budget builds and I see the people that are trying to play a a less consistent deck because they're, they're worried about the budget. They're like, oh, I have to play a budget build of this deck because I can't afford the full price value of the deck. Like if you're looking at price comparisons right now, I guess what... Um, Sword Soul will probably be the most expensive deck in the meta. And that's because Ecclesius and uh, Mouillets and mm -hmm. and Floor. Um, but aside from that, it's just like you're looking at that course, just a pure core for a deck, around $150, $200 and around that price range in comparison to taking it back to like Dragon World format, apparently, with comments were $15, $20. So... Yeah, it, apparently the, the back in the game, the day like the games were really more expensive, hundred dollar Draco sacks, not even old tea, just Draco sack. Like Draco yeah. sacks of ten cents. Draco sack was like two hundred dollars. Yeah. Yeah, it's, a, yeah. it's like it's like two hundred dollars in Dragon Ruler format. Yeah, and all the but Dragon I, Rulers, like, they, they were rares. Like, I'm thinking like, uh, what fire like, like i think like right when xe's became a thing like that was probably like the cheapest format i can remember because mm -hmm. like you could play like fire fist and like they were relatively cheap uh other than the bears uh and that was like if you if you didn't want to play the ulties like like if you as long as you didn't want to want to play max rarity like it was there that format was like super affordable yeah um, ruler format was insane because every ruler was twenty dollars and then um, there was a thing with Vanity's Emptiness, which was a, like a $60 common for a few months. Yeah. And that was just oh wild. God. Like, I, I, I was looking I through Volk, and I'm like, I have five that. Vanities. Ooh. Sweet. I, I had, like, I had like some fan, some pile of Vanities in reserve, and it was shot up to, like, 60 70 bucks. I was like, for a common. Okay, let's go, let's go. <laughs> yeah. That was That's crazy, crazy times. But, yeah, like, now it's just, you can... I see a priced out virtual world for somebody, and it was like fifty fifty dollars. A priced out drytron for somebody. This is full course. I was like close to forty forty five. Um, then we've had the mocking deck that would actually being played too. Um, that was like a thirty dollar deck. We've had ten dollar decks actually if it put together. Um, but when you're looking at, I, I guess the most affordable, consistent meta deck right now. It's you're looking at Tri Brigade, which is very affordable, and you're looking at a Virtual World. It's also like 1.5 at this point, and it's still very affordable because the most expensive card will be cards in the extra deck, mm -hmm. and or, or your staples. Yeah. But even staples I, now, you got um, Imperms that are super. It's a ten dollars super. You can go buy three structure decks at your local Target for ten dollars a piece, and you can get your your structure decks there. Yeah. You can get your Imperms. Ash is still going to be an expensive staple. Right now, it's $20 for a common. You're looking at secrets for about $115, $110. Um, so then you got that. But aside from those two, it's just the deck's completely affordable. You got common part of prosperity, uh, part of desires, which is the staple three of. And everything else in the deck is so you have three Lili, Lao Lao, uh, and everything else of the virtual world monsters. You can get place it for $1, $1.50. Yeah. So that's a very affordable deck right now. Um, and we talked about Phantom Knights. So the best is the affordability of it. Um, even Birds, like Kazi had said, it's just like Birds is affordable. The game right now is in a very affordable state. And sometimes, yeah, I get the people that are like, oh, Yugi's horrible right now. It's just like the game sucks now. Um, and I mentioned this to Boyd before. It's like you hate the game because you don't want to put the time to learn it at this point where we're at. Yeah, because like Ryan said, he came back and he was like, "He oh, you need to play this brain deck, 
um, Next, which yeah. is like Nurse Burn and like Set Fire, Back Row, Bullcrap. And when I came back, it's just like I was playing zombies. Like I came back and I was playing like a goat deck that told me I couldn't play Pot of Greed. And I'm like, why not? Like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, yeah, <laughs> and, you're uh, probably right there. Like, you can't show up like, playing Dark Magician and expect to do well. Not that I would know anything about that, you know. But. The whole shot, the whole shot, when I showed them my deck, I said, this is the deck, can I play this deck in the event today? The whole, the whole, for the guys at the high, guys behind the counter, they're all just like, yo, look at this guy's deck. Like, clown the fuck out of me. Like, they have oh. no idea who I am. Like, because now, when I go back, they're all like, oh, man, Riot's here, this song's awesome. Yeah. And they were like, bro, they were like, Look at this clown, dude. My deck. Um, actually, I'm not even gonna say it. Why am I gonna say it? I can't. I can't have this, this recorded thing. I can't have this on. I can't have this. I can't. I can put myself on blast. <laughs> <laughs> So like I think so like, I think well, it's getting close to time, but I just want to say this one last thing. I, I didn't get a chance to say this early on, but when I had first come back playing Yu Gi Oh, there was one person that helped me cultivate my abilities. He's right sitting right there with us right now. If Ryan hadn't like like properly told me like here's what you should do, here's what you shouldn't do, I don't think I'd be I'd continue playing the game. Because I was going to locals, I was getting clapped every week, playing Alter Geist, not having a Link Karibo off of Melusik, like, making those dumb moves. <laughs> you, know? <laughs> you know? But it's like, it's like having, I think, like, just like the wholesome idea, like having friends that are willing to play with you, teach you, guide you, and help you. I think, like, that to me has been, like, the best part about it, you know? Like, literally every time... Yeah. Ryan goes to play, I'm with him. Or anytime I go to play, Ryan's with me. And it's like, just having like that friendship is like super, That's super important. Like, yeah, it's super yeah. important. Super important. And, and, and you know what? Like, a lot of people, man, they don't want to help anybody, bro. They, they're they like, they're like fight or flight. They're like, no, you're not in my circle. I'm not. And even then, even some people in their circles, they're like, they still try to boss each other around. Yeah. And like, I think the most important thing is just building each other up. And you know, you know, you see it like a little bit everywhere. But you know, you gotta really connect to someone. Like, Kazi's someone I liked, but there are some people. You know, I'm at locals. I'm like, I'm not gonna give you any information because I need this easy win every week. But yeah, I'm, I'll be nice to them. But and I'll try to help them. But you know, if they cross you, you're just like, all right, it's, it's a lost cause. Yeah, you gotta get this one. <laughs> but even like Kazi, bro, like. He's, he's, made, he's made some big moves, like money moves. You know, he's got he's got big cards. He's got big collection cards, yeah. and so he was just invested in it. I mean, just like you know, I think I think if you put in the work, you know, the the, the, hobby, the hobby can be like really rewarding in a lot of different ways, not just as like a activity, as but as I mean, you know. yeah, yeah, right. So like I haven't like now it's I think I'd say it's been about a year now where I haven't actually spent any money on cards like I just buy and sell like my new my motto for whenever I play Yu-Gi-Oh is that whenever I buy a deck that deck has to pay itself off so like I bought Sword Soul for like what five hundred eighty dollars from like Corey I told myself until I make this money back from winning in tournaments and stuff like that I can't get rid of the deck um so right now like I think like this deck has done its purpose like I've throughout the whole I've had this deck pulled two ulti and perms, like four of the um, ultis, there's a ton of secrets, and like that's just like I think I think that's the model that people need to have in order to make the game affordable. Like stick with the deck until you feel you've gotten the value out of it, because then that way you yeah. never feel like you're spending too much money on the game. Yeah, that's what, that's what I usually do. Is just like buy and dump, and I think Corey's in the same thing. It's a Corey. Just... Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, Twelve uh, ultimate uh, imprints. I, I, I always tell people like the best the best thing about. <laughs> Yu-Gi-Oh! is that like if you put the time and, and effort into Yu-Gi-Oh! like Yu-Gi-Oh! will pay you back in dividends. Like I, I can like my like talk, having flashbacks when we first got back into the game. My first time I ever went to like a real locals, I showed up. Me and my friend were up to like three thirty in the morning. We built uh, we built our decks out of like random bulk that we just found, <laughs> and I played I played sixty card chaos and like. I had no idea. I just know that if I summon Black Panther Warrior, like <laughs> if it dies, I get to add one to my hand. So like I wanted that. Rec I was like, oh, let me add this other sixteen hundred dollars or sixteen hundred beater 
to my hand. Sixteen hundred dollars. And then, like, <laughs> and then uh, but like, yeah, now I'm at the point like, I'm, I'm right there with you. Like, I I build decks that I obviously think are going to be competitive and relevant, but also like that I'm going to perform with and I, and I enjoy playing and I put the time into it. Like, yeah. I didn't play, I didn't have Max Rarity Drytron when I built, when I built Drytron. Like, I was playing common orange lights and everything else. And, like, basically, like, from playing and getting cards and from, like, topping events and stuff like that, like, yeah. I eventually, like, sold those and I upgraded my orange lights to ulties and et cetera, et cetera. Like, like it, you don't, you don't always have to, like, like, think that, oh, if I don't have, like, the, the highest rarity card, people are going to judge me. It's like, you're gonna win the same way you will with a common card as you will with the ulti card. Yeah. Sure, the ulti will look better in the long run, and like it'll give you like the the money back that you put into the game. But like that's not that's not what it's important right now. Like worry about the deck that you're playing, getting good with the deck that you're playing, and then and then you yeah will start to pay. Yeah, you. It'll, it'll reward you that way. Yeah. Yeah. With uh, even with even with the um I guess the seat time in general, like mm-hmm. the game the game can be very enjoyable. Um, just in, in whatever aspect it is, like I've, and the, like what one thing is just like I do like about our locals is like how, like, just that easy. It's a very welcoming community. Um, you don't see that in many places. Every everybody else got the clicks. Yeah, we have our clicks over here at Easy, but we're also very welcoming to other players. It's never exclusive. Um, it's never exclusive. And it's, it's really not. Like, you go to other places, and from what we've heard, other places, it's just like, oh, you have your click. If you're not in the in click, you're at the different table, and you're not in on the jokes. But when if I'm there, I try to get everybody involved. I try to remember everybody's name. If I don't remember everybody's name, so I call everybody Guy just to be safe. Um, <laughs> and Solid. just to play it on the safe side. Um but a lot of the times it's just like we'll have players that will come up to us and like, hey, like, can you give me tips on this deck or anything else? Or they'll ask Corey, hey, Corey, do you know how to do this? Or like we've constantly tried to help players to build our community up. Um, I've had guys like Steve, Steve help out. I'm like, hey, Steve, I got this kid. He's new to the game. Like, I'm going to sit him next to you. That way he can ask you for help if he needs help. Um, he's not competitive, but he wants to get involved in the game. And, um, and like, it was just, it's a great, great environment. And, um, it's something that like, I see as a very, very positive thing in a, in a community like that, where we can build other players up. Um, we have like the two, the two ones, both of them play DDDs and me and board were actually, I messaged them earlier today. I'm like, Hey, this is a DDD deck that I found. Yeah. You like, got the manual right decors. here, how to play DD, uh, DDD. Part one, so it's just like yeah, yeah, book stuff one. like that. It makes the game a little <laughs> bit more affordable and a little bit more fun. And yeah, um, I think it's just like you—you you have all aspects. Yeah, like you have the players that want to dump all the money into it, and you have the affordable players, and then you have the players that have the knowledge but don't have the needs to it. And um, as of right now, I think the meta is just at a good place. I think I think Pasadena was. It's going to end up being, I guess, like our reward for being, continuing to play through the pandemic. Um, yeah. And that's why everybody's so excited to go and and everything else. But that's pretty much it. Um, I guess we'll see. We'll see where, where we stand after after Pasadena. Um, I do want to make, a, I guess, a last comment in regards to, to the medical. Whatever decision is made in regards to the meta um or what decks to play like i know a lot of us are like oh yeah like just don't forget to go out and have fun winning is kind of fun so like <laughs> winning is fun come on now <laughs> it's like I, I don't play for a second like <laughs> but yeah it's just um i think it, i think it'll be fun and then i mean even even us the discussions that we're having now is in regards to podcasts i think it'll be a good uh, resource tool for everybody else to use to yeah. kind of get some ideas. And I mean, if you, anybody has any questions, I'm pretty sure they can message any one of us. And if they can't get in touch with us, but it's pretty much it. Yeah. Well, I think it was a, a very successful introduction episode. Very uh, c- consistent uh, discussions and um, everything like that. Everyone was equally involved. So very good.
Good job, everyone. Boy, you did not talk enough. That is a lie. That I didn't. I didn't talk long. enough, <laughs> but I didn't want to talk too much because I'm already on the channel a lot. That's but. Right. Yeah, Corey didn't get his camera working. Yeah, we haven't seen Corey. I'll have to bless you guys on my face next round. You have to really even play me like that. Wait. You should call me Put in the plug for remotos. Yeah. Yeah, so um, <laughs> remotos are held on our Easy Gaming Discord uh, every Thursday at 7 o'clock. Um, we have our locals every Friday at 6 o'clock, and then we have a regular uh, Saturday events at 3.30. This coming up uh, Friday, I did not get a confirmation of shipment, but I was told we are getting a case of uh, Brothers of Legend. Um, but I wanted to ask you guys, do you guys want to, like, I can do, like, a $5 event for a case of Megatons on this, for this upcoming Saturday. Just, like, a $5 entry for a case of Megatons just to kind of end the year in a good note. Have yeah. everybody out, get some food in. Um, just to kind of do like a pre-Christmas celebration for everybody because I leave on the 23rd and I won't be back till Pasadena. So I probably won't see you guys till Pasadena. So I don't know if you guys are yeah, I'm good planning for that. anything for this weekend. Yeah, I'm good for that. Yeah, I'm coming. I'm coming. I also have right, everyone cool. in this room a gift too for Christmas. So don't even forget. Awesome, awesome, my guy. Um, that's pretty much it, guys. If you guys have any questions, I guess uh, hit up the AZ Gaming page. Uh, you can yep. find us on Facebook. Um, I'll put that in the description bar uh, below. Yeah. Check Instagram's that out. still not up. Twitter's still not up. But yep. I guess I'll go ahead and get both going now. Um, deck profiles will go up for every major event, our regular local Saturdays. Um, we could do just the top, the winner, winner uh, deck profile every Saturday. So I guess just like. That, that mainly be it, um, but yeah, like I guess I'll look keep keeping touch for for content. Definitely. Okay, guys. Well, once again, I'd like to thank everybody, and uh, that's it for episode one. And we'll see you guys in episode two. Till next time. Later, peeps. I gotta go Later. finish my laundry.